Okay, today what we're going to do is look a little more at, more in detail at call options. We're going to look at the Black-Scholes option pricing model. Um, it's, it looks really messy. It's not that bad, but it sure does look bad. It says the call is a function of here the underlying asset, this S, and the amount of time. And this is the normal distribution, standard normal distribution of D1, where D1 is all of this and times the underlying asset price, the stock, minus ND2, where D2 equals D1 minus the standard deviation times the square root of time. And when we look at this, it looks really, really messy. And I get that, and I understand it, and I almost apologize for that. Not quite, but almost apologize. Um, what I want you to do is take the derivatives of these, and I think that's the more important part of this. So we're going to look down here, and I, did, I shorthand this. I say the call is a function of the underlying asset price, the time to maturity, the risk-free rate, the strike price, and the volatility. So what we want to do is look at the, the, der the derivative of each of these and the way, the way they move. So for instance, if the stock price goes up, the underlying asset price goes up, the value of the call is going to go up. I ask you to put a positive sign there. If they move in the same direction. Time, the longer time to expiration, the more valuable that option is. So that's a positive. Risk-free rate is positive. Strike price is negative, and volatility is positive. Very important. Make sure you know this. Write this down on your cheat sheet for the test. Do whatever. That's very, very important. So let's just see if it works. So what we're going to do is going to come over here, and let's go, and we're, we're at Yahoo Finance, and I just pulled out, here is the, looking at the SPY, options on the SPY, for September of 2013, and I just quickly, I just did this up front um, before we started this. Here are the strike prices, so the strike prices are here, and we have this S, this underlying asset price is 166. So, Remember, an option gives you the right but not the obligation to buy. So you would have the right but not the obligation to buy at 160. You would pay six dollars and eighty-seven cents for that. It's good for about another eight nine days. So you're, you're not getting a lot of time premium. You're paying six eighty-seven for that. As we go up in time, so longer time period from September to November, sure enough, the value goes up in the value of the option goes up from 687 to 821. Also notice, as strike price, this is negative. The higher the strike price, the lower the option. 687 at 160, at 165, 178. Strike price of 170, we're looking at 25 cents, and 175, we're looking at 7 cents. So this supports what we were saying down here with the way direction, the directions, uh, the options move. The next thing I want to do quickly is let's go and look at um, what's called the Greeks. So to do this, we're going to look at an option pricing calculator. Um, the one I tend to use in class, and the only reason I use it in class is because we can change it. It doesn't automatically update instantly. It's a little slower, so we can do it. So let's suppose, let's go back and let's put this at a, a dollar, 160, what is it, 166 now, the S&P, the SPY. And the strike price of 160, um, let's do 165. Let's make it the same there. Volatility is sort of a guess. I'm going with the VIX. I'm just going to say it's about 18%, 16%, somewhere in that range. Let's go with 18. Um, and calculate the value. And here we get the value of this option at 160, with a strike price of 166 is two, and actually this is, I didn't lower this, I should have done this. This is now 15.8 to be exact. I just looked it up just before we did this video. So we see the option is about $2. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe I, I added a number wrong somewhere up here. The, the actual market price is $1.78, but it's, it's close. Uh, Black Shoals is only a model, it's not perfect by any means. Uh, so we get this, and we can play around and do others. So, for example, let's raise this um, from 166. Let's put it to 175. Was that the highest? 175. No. Strike price of 175. I'm sorry. Strike price of 175. 
And if we do that, we're going to see the value of the option is uh, one cent. So it actually is overstated. This could very well be a stale price. This may not have traded in a while. So you, you have to be careful when you're looking at p options that don't trade very frequently. So let's go back. We're putting this back to uh, share price of 160. Uh, six and strike price of 165. So it's it's at the money, just a little in the money, and calculate the values again. And you can see what we're looking at is a European call option. The other thing I want to point out here that's it's pretty important for what we'll be doing in class are what's called the Greeks. These uh, essentially are looking at the rate of change for things. So where we're looking is right here. And a couple specific ones I want to look at today are delta. Delta measures how much the asset moves for a, how much the option moves for a change in the a asset. So essentially, if we're looking at it, it's looking at the change in the call price given a change in the underlying asset price. So here we have a number of 0.613. So let's just play in this. So, so right now the option value is two, whatever the strike combination I have. So two. So let's suppose the S moves by one, one up. So I gotta erase this stuff so we can see it. It's a, sort of a flaw in the system, but we can get rid of it pretty quick. So here we go, and we now are gonna raise the stock price. We're right here. We're gonna raise that to 167. So 167, it should go up, and sure enough, it does, and it goes up almost by exactly what the delta had been. So it was two dollars is now 266, um, almost exactly where we had been looking at before. So um, worked just like we expected it to. Other things here, uh, besides the delta, we can look at theta. Theta is a measure of time. So you see here, um, this as theta goes, so as time gets short, the value of the option is going to shrink. It's going to shrink fairly dramatically here because we were, we're looking at a very short window. The other one I want to make sure we know, notice, and it's a pretty important one is, again, is Vega. Vega is here. This is the, looks at how much it changes, how much the option changes given a change in volatility. As volatility goes up, we see the vega goes up as well. So we're just going to plug this in real fast just to show you. Let's go back to our original. Uh, we had 166 to make the math simple. 166 and whoop, 166. No. Okay, so 166 and the option value goes back to two dollars like we said it would before. And Vega is 881, so now let's change and, and let's increase volatility. And you're going to see what happens. I'm going to go up to, let's go up to 16, let's go up to 17, just because it's easier to type. So recalculate, and it went from $2 to 210. So it did go up as we expected it to go up. Um, so those are the big ones. So the change in the call, given the change in S, is positive. Um, that didn't quite work. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, delta C, uh, try it again, again erase that. So erase the whole thing, start again. Um, so the change in the call given the change in the underlying asset, that's delta, and that is greater than zero. The vega, is the change in the call given a change in volatility, and that again is greater than zero. Other things, the chain theta, and that's the change in the call given a change in time, and time goes down. This is positive, so shorter time means the option becomes less, they, they move in the same direction, and that, that's the way to think of these. These all move in the same direction. Um, other things we'll talk about later, we'll talk about dividends, how, how options move with dividends. We may even talk about gamma, how second order, how things move in the second order, how much the option, how much delta would move given a change in the underlying asset price, etc. But there you go. Uh, we could also talk about rho. Rho looks at uh, how much it changes relative to uh, the risk-free rate. You see that's positive. 
and again we would see that over here is positive right here. So real quick recap, but I think an important one. Be sure for test purposes, etc., you understand how to interpret these and to, to look at these option tables. Whether you're looking at Yahoo, whether you're looking wherever, make sure you'll be able to interpret them if uh, we have them for a test. So thank you very much, and we'll talk next time.